course on effective leadership focuses on your role as a leader in high performance teams in the first months. While it may take months before you get your team to reach the third stage, it's extremely important that you understand each one. It's also vital to say that this structure is not linear or uh, easily identifiable. People may have different views on the stage that team is currently at. In addition, it's worth mentioning that when members leave the team, the team as a whole recedes in the process, especially because the new member will go through all the stages. New rules will have to be set into place and the like. Now let's get into how you can better understand and work at each stage of the team building stages. Hit thumbs up if you want more content related to leadership. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel too. Hello there everyone! In the first stage of team development, the team members are getting to know each other. Here, there is a lot of respect, excitement, cordiality and tolerating situations you would normally not accept. Yes, at this stage, few people tend to disagree immediately when they realize that someone is doing something they think is wrong or out of their taste. There's a strong sense of dependence and tiptoeing. Spoiler, and this is exactly what leads to the next stage, where there are conflicts. There's a lot of building up that will eventually lead to animosity in the group. People are seeking social approval and tend not to want to take on the role of pointing out what's wrong. Therefore, it's not uncommon for the team members to expect the leader to assume this role of correcting others, even if the members don't express their disapproval to the leader. Your role as a leader is to create the best environment of mutual respect, to accelerate this process of getting to know each other and trust building. It will be crucial for you to go through this storm stage with as little pain as possible if you can collect feedback from each other about how the team is doing and what could be done to avoid problems up front. Team building sessions and getting to know each other moments can be great activities for this beginning. In addition, allowing open spaces for everyone to talk about their work preferences, how they prefer to work with others and more private spaces for individual feedback. Remember, each person person here wants to present the most polished and diplomatic version of themselves. Everyone knows the power of first impressions. Conflicts start to arise. How to get through the storm? After some time in the initial phase, members will stop putting up with others' mannerisms that they find irritating or lack of some characteristics that they consider important, such as punctuality, cordiality, politeness, agility, etc. And that can be exacerbated if it's a time of high pressure, such as a tie dye deadline, many mistakes happening, and so on. This is a unique moment in the stages of team development. There is a defensive posture and even a strong sense of a negative competition. Members can even try to avoid direct conflict with those they consider to be antagonists and start creating drama triangles, a situation in which people are vilified. We even have a lesson dedicated to this concept. It happens a lot that relationships that once were fruitful to be broken by this period of conflict. Just to give a quick example, this conflicts are more common in two situations. First, among those who work together, especially when the quality of one person's delivery influences the other's ability to act. This is because probably the person who receives the task's output was silent during the formation phase until when they can't hold it no more. Second, between leader and direct reports. As the leader usually has the role of giving feedback, if you are responsible for ensuring quality control and you miss it once, twice, three times, the fourth time will be very difficult to correct, as the person already assimilated what's acceptable. Thus, giving feedback now is going to be hard. And I get it, it's super uncomfortable to give feedback in the first encounter, but it's necessary. Do not miss this opportunity. In my complete course, there are four lessons with four different ways of feedback. How to get out of the conflict and go to the normal phase. The secret for you to get into the conflict stage 
quickly and to go to the normal stage is to embrace issues as they happen. This may seem strange to outsiders, but I think it's the practice that best makes people who work together become a real team. Everyone needs to have the freedom and agency to raise tensions. What does that mean? If there is a point that is not in agreement, people need to know that they can go against it, freedom, and feel comfortable doing so. Agency. You, in charge of leading high performance team, create this type of environment by asking questions at the beginning to incite debates, by stimulating when someone brings up an uncomfortable situation, and of course, by promoting dialogue between the parties. In the first teams that I was a member of, we received a lot of training on the subject. It was talked about all the time in my first serious team, if I may say so. We had a lot of discussions and it was incredible. We went through very difficult times, but there was a very, very strong sense of cohesion. Don't be afraid to give feedback. It will speed up the process a lot. And when I say speed up, it doesn't mean going faster than the right time, but actually not making the conflict last longer than it should. The conflict will come. Research shows that every team goes through moments of conflict. The more you avoid it, the worse the situation will be. Who hasn't been in relationships in which confrontation was avoided and this situation was getting more and more uncomfortable? The last stage of team development, from learning to performance. When you get into the conflict stage, now you have to start to say what's bothering you, why it bothers you, and you as a team you start creating rules. Each person will have to give in one area or another, there is no other way. Finally, in the stage of learning, the teams begin to create a sense of cohesion and unity. The members discuss more openly the factors under which they work better or worse, what their conditions are and there is greater transparency. It is important to note that a united team does not mean a team without conflict. On the contrary, the number of tensions increases, only they are much smoother, there is no longer so much pain and struggle. The people on the team can communicate their dissatisfactions in a much more candid and open way without being so defensive. Here, people understand each other's values, respect them and know how to work with them. Some of the papers even point out that openness on a personal level and discussion of personal problems were found in various groups. In the performing stage, the main team members work in sync that the existence of interdependent tasks no longer inhibits processes and projects from advancing, which is something that in the other steps still exists. There is no need to stop to discuss issue and to oil the machine. Here's what happens. Your role in leading high performance teams is not to mediate all conflicts. Don't take on that role. You must create an environment in which people feel comfortable bringing tensions directly to those involved and always keep an eye on the dynamics that are being created in your team in order to move the process forward. The last step is the journey, the team closure moment. In this stage, we do the final feedback rounds and ensure that there are as few loose ends as possible. I don't know if there is a minimum duration for each step, but also take your time to enjoy the whole process. All phases are essential for the team to mature both personally and professionally. You don't want to skip straight to the performance stage. That honeymoon stage at the beginning is quite magical, right? Cool! As we say in my hometown, better than that, just twice that. To recap what we saw in this lesson, we got to know the stages of team development. Forming, storming, norming, performing and adjourning. The forming stage is the honeymoon, the beginning of the team. Here, members are getting to know each other and they avoid conflict as much as possible. The role of the leader should be to encourage the beauty of a sense of team and plant the seed of an environment of trust. In the second stage, storming, people's differences begin to emerge. Little work is done and conflict is inevitable. Your role as a leader is to ensure that these confrontations are being resolved in a healthy and productive way, moving towards a resolution. Normie is the stage where rules are created and defined. The team begins to enter into a consensus movement and to work in sync. Thus, we reach the stage of performing or high performance, when the team is cohesive and works seamlessly. There is the peak of productivity and results generation. 
In the next lesson on the five dysfunctions of a team, the topic will be why teams go wrong, what are the most common causes, and how to keep an eye on it. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel to follow the lessons, like this content if you think it has helped you, and share it with your colleagues and co-workers. Always look both ways, see you in the future.